fight hype here with Stephen Breadman Edwards. Uh, great victory for J-Rock, but you weren't totally pleased, man. Uh, tell us about Julian Williams' performance. Um, you know, first of all, I'm happy he got the win. You know, he fought an undefeated fighter, man. And uh, a lot of the prospects, you know, they don't, well, I, I don't know any of them with the same number of fights and experience level that he had that fights the caliber of guys that he fights. So I'm happy that he, he got a victory over an undefeated fighter. But with that being said, you know, he brushed things a little bit, you know, but it's a learning experience. We're going to go back and we're going to be better the next time around, you know. There's a lot of little things. We had a long camp, you know, we were training since June night, And, um, this fight was originally scheduled for 10 rounds, and when he found out it was an eight rounder, he kind of like rushed things a little bit, but you know, if, as long as you recognize the mistakes you make, you can always correct them, so it'll be better the next time around. And as a trainer, you never want to tell your fighter to not be aggressive, but how do you temper that and, and maintain the, the level of aggression that you need to fight at this level? Well, first of all, you can't be aggressive with every fighter. Sometimes the guy you can kind of set him up. And, uh, and walk him into a bigger shot when you don't press him as much, you know. But it just depends on the circumstances and the fight. Julian's a little bit hot-tempered, and he's a little bit fiery by nature. So I always like him to box and use the jab before he gets in to, um, you know, more vicious exchanges because once he gets in that mood, it's hard to pull him out of that mood, you know. So the thing with him specifically, I like him to establish the jab. And once he establishes the jab and establishes rhythm, for sure, man. And when are you looking to bring him back in? Because uh, we talked earlier, and you say he got to kind of he got to kind of live with the stench of this fight and not pleasing you 100. percent So when are you looking to bring him back in? Um, uh, I was told that he's going to fight again in December, which is good. You know, I'm gonna give him some time off because he's always been training. You know, I'm gonna see you know how mature he is now. He's 24. You know, he, he keeps his weight down and he does little things that we do to keep him right. You know, while he's um, well, it's not in the actual camp, but we're going to start another camp in maybe the middle of October because he's a fast twitch guy. It only takes him really five to six weeks to peak out. You know, guys talk about they need eight weeks. Julian don't need eight weeks. He can, he can peak out in five or six weeks and he's fine, you know. So uh, we're going to start camping around, I say the second week of October because I was told he was fighting in December. And you talked about his level of opposition earlier. We, again, we talked earlier off record, and, and you pretty much said, with the exception of a few moves that just wouldn't make sense, you're willing to put him in with anybody, man. Elaborate on that a little bit. Um, you know, he's a confident kid. He believes in himself. He believes in me. You know, if I tell him he can be a guy, then he can be a guy. You know, he'll just say when we're going to start camp. Um, he's faced a lot of different styles in the gym. You know, we got a, we got a city full of really, really good fighters. You box a small guy like Carl Dark and a big guy like Jesse Hart. He's even won a few rounds with Bernard Hopkins. He used to support Mike Jones and Gabby Rosado a lot. We got a couple really good um, amateurs. Um, kid named Boots Ennis is phenomenal, man. This kid is good enough to be an Olympian. He boxes with Karan um, Davies. Uh, he, got a, he, he sees a lot of different things, you know. That, that, the, that the public doesn't see and does well. Um, Julian's a man. You know, some of these guys are 24 years old. You know, they really can't fight anybody. But he's a man. He's, he's physically tough. You know, he, he doesn't shy away from contact. You know, he has a hard body. Um, he's a, he's an all-around fighter. And he can just pretty much fight anybody. You know what I mean? I'm not calling anybody specifically out. But when we sit down and I talk to Brad and I talk to... Um, John Beninati, the matchmaker, or Al Heyman, you know, I let them know that I want him to fight tough, you know, because he, uh, he responds better when he fights a better guy, you know, no disrespect to Elisa Gonzalez, he was a decent undefeated fighter, but, he, like, sometimes in the gym, a trainer have a guy, he'll say, I don't want my guy sparring down, well, yeah. sometimes when you fight a guy that's not quite on your skill level, it can kind of make you look a little bit bad, you know what I mean, so, um, Julian fighting tough, it don't mean nothing to me because I I know what's going to happen if you, if you put him under the gun. He's going to respond to it. And, and he's in a hot division, man. 154 pounds, a very hot division. A lot of names there. Um, is there a goal set at the end to where you want Julian competing for a title? Or, or are you just really worried about pegging away, getting him in tough fights and getting that experience? Um, you 
obviously he wants to be a champion. You know that's what he's in this for. He wants to be the undisputed um, 154 pound champion. Um, he said he wants to break Terry Garner's defense record. Um, he's not really, you know, that's kind of my job to pick the guys. So he's not really like in love with fighting anybody in particular. He's just willing to fight anybody that stands in his way of um, becoming a champion. Um, I told him that he should be a champion by the time he's 25 years old. I believe that great fighters, you know, how many guys as great fighters that you know that by the time they were 25, they pretty much could fight anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. so that's kind of a little rule of thumb. He's been a pro since 2010. So next year, he should be able to fight just about anybody. I mean, he can fight anybody now, but I look for him to get a title shot next year, no doubt about it. What else you have going on, man? I know you mentioned a few young fighters that's out there. I know you live in the gym, basically. What else you seeing, man? Um, well, I got Junior in, you know. I got a kid named Karan, shut it down, baby. He's from Wilmington, Delaware, but he makes the trek over to Philly every day. He's a phenomenal talent. He's a 4 0. He won nationals uh, three times. He's not even 20 yet, he's 19. He's, uh, um, he's also signed with Al Heyman. I got a couple younger guys, you know, that are just in the gym. They just, you know, learn their way. I also advise Steve Chambers. Um, we just had a fight with Andre Berto last week. I don't train Steve, but I advise him. I'm proud of Steve. He, you know, he put up a good effort against Berto. Berto is an actual champion. And man, I'm just grinding, man. Just working. Just trying to, you know, give me a couple world champions on my belt. That's all. Man, I appreciate the time. Congrats again to you and Julian.